So in this video, we're headed to a historical part of San Antonio, full of rich culture, has gone through some tremendous changes in the past couple of years. As a matter of fact, if you ask any San Antonian about Cherry Street, you're going to get some Snickers out of them. So stick around and find out why that is, but more importantly, what you can find when you move into Dignity Hill, San Antonio. All right, so I'm sitting here in Dignity Park, and I just wanted to, you know, kind of lay the framework for this video because it is a full vlog, and we are going to get to the streets here in a minute. I'm going to show you some homes, and as a matter of fact, I'm actually going to go into a home that is currently on the market for sale so you could see what massive work that has been done to this community. So Dignity Hill is an old community. It didn't have a very good reputation, and uh, in the last probably 15 years, it's been getting gentrified. It's been getting, uh, you know, revamped, flipped, whatever you want to call it. But there's a lot of people moving to this part of town. But I'm going to tell you to avoid it for several reasons. And but before we get to those, uh, I just want to make sure that you stick around because that one story of Cherry Street, if you're not from here, it's going to make sense once it's all said and done. But anyway, so. Uh, like I said, this is off to the east side of San Antonio, downtown San Antonio. You can see the Tower of America right there and the uh, the Alamo Dome. I don't know if that's it right there, but you can see the Alamo Dome from here. Uh, it is just so close to it. Uh, you can throw a rock and just see downtown. So um, as you drive around or not drive around, as you walk around the park, you're going to be able to see the, the city skyline as a backdrop and you'll be able to see how close we really are to um, to downtown. So um, who lives here? Well, a long time ago, uh, this is when things were, I guess, normal before the, the gentrification started. Uh, a lot of um, a lot of minority people lived here. I call it generational living because people have lived in the same home for generations. Uh, it's been passed down to to their, you know, to their family members as the, the older people get older and die off. But um, I would say about 15 years ago, this community started to, to have an influx of investors. And we're talking about out-of-town investors that came in with money. They saw the potential because, again, the Alamo Dome like right behind me. So uh, they, they thought, well, you know what? If we start to revamp this neighborhood, there's a lot of money in it involved for us. And they're, they weren't wrong. Uh, there's definitely a lot of money involved. So uh, they came in here and uh, the typical homes that were here were old craftsman homes, uh, colonial type homes. And uh, they were soon replaced with cheaper buildings. Uh, and what I mean by cheaper is like no character, no history. They're just, you know, they look like boxes. As a matter of fact, some of these homes were being built with um, with shipping containers. And uh, it kind of really took away from the neighborhood, from the from the history, the rich history. And uh, yeah, it, it started to get a different vibe. But along with these investors building these box homes with no character came in an influx of a bunch of um, uh, a younger crowd, a uh, younger crowd with money and uh, the prices skyrocketed. So currently on the market, there's a home for seventy nine thousand nine hundred ninety five dollars. And you can imagine what that one looks like. Um, and then it goes all the way up to seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars. And honestly, not worth it. Like I would not pay $750,000 for something that looks like a box. And that's exactly what this home looks like. Uh, but some of these investors came in here. They started flipping the neighborhood. They started to to do a real good job. And that's why I want to take you to the uh, to the house that I'm going to take you to today so I can show you what those homes look like. Like if you want downtown living, but you don't want to live in downtown, this is right on the outskirts. Uh, you still have the walkability, tons of shops that you can go uh, shopping in, tons of restaurants. You can go, you know, hang out, uh, local bars, breweries and that kind of stuff. So there's 
a bunch of that available to you. And then, of course, you have these green spaces where you can go uh, take your dog to the dog park. You can take your children, you know, to the playground and uh, you can have just the outdoor vibe that you that you want. Right. And that's one of the things that my wife and I love about this place is that you can go outdoors. You can have a beer at the Alamo Brewery uh, or Alamo Beer Company. It is a brewery. Uh, You can have a beer outdoors. It's family friendly. So people can come out there. You can bring your dogs. Uh, I don't know if you want to bring a cat, but uh, typically people don't bring cats. Right. (laughs) But uh, my cat, at least she's she stays home. So we don't take her anywhere. But you can take your dogs. You can walk them. You can, you you know, sit at a restaurant, at a brewery, have a beer, have a pizza, and your dog can be there with you. So that's one of the, the good things about living here is that you have those green spaces. You have that walkability. But uh, the bad part of it is that there's still a lot of homes that are, that are you know, falling apart. They look run down. The homelessness in this area is... Um, not just this area and all of San Antonio is pretty sad. So there's a lot of homeless people living underneath the Hay Street Bridge. There's, um, you know, panhandlers, there's people walking around begging for money, uh, people just strung out on drugs. And uh, it's very evident, like when you see these people, you know, they're on drugs. So they're talking to themselves they're having these conversations. And, you know, so that that part of the neighborhood don't care too much for but i guess at some point it's gonna gonna correct itself maybe these homeless people are gonna go away somewhere i mean i don't know where uh but there's a lot of good organizations though that do um you know service them that they come out they give you know they'll give food they'll as a matter of fact i think san antonio made it uh illegal for you to give food to homeless people which is insane uh you don't like these are human beings that need a hand that need a hand uh they need a hand up so we uh not we uh people go and you know give them food give them clothing that kind of stuff so anyway uh let's jump on the just jump in my truck let's take a drive around the neighborhood so i can show you and i know that i always in my other videos i talk about hebs cuz heb is like the staple uh, grocery store here in san antonio but this heb i'm about to show you do not go in there my wife works down the street and she says that it, it's horrible in there like uh and i don't know i've never been so i'm taking her word for it and my wife is pretty a pretty um uh, pretty forgiving person so if she says it's bad it's probably bad. So let's go jump in the truck and uh, take a look at the neighborhood. And then we'll go visit that one house so you can see what kind of home you would be buying if you decided to move into this neighborhood. All right. So we're back in the truck. Uh, we're going to go ahead and go drive around the neighborhood so I can show you, you know, what the homes look like or some some spots that you want to go visit and some spots that you want to avoid uh, so you can actually see it through your own eyes. So I'm going to go ahead and turn the camera around and then uh, we'll get going here. Uh, while we're driving around, I'll be talking about, you know, the different things that you could expect to find here in uh, in this neighborhood. As you can tell, some of these homes right here, they're, uh, they're a lot older. So that's what you're going to find here in Dignity is you're going to find some older homes. You're going to find some homes that are um, a little bit newer. And it's mainly single family homes that you have here. There are some duplexes or multifamily homes but for the most part, they're single family. And um, the average home was built in uh, in 1930. So that's the average uh, year that these homes were built. And something that you'll notice about this neighborhood is that there's a lot of little mom and pop stores. Like this one right here, this is a, a body shop. So it's right across the street from a little restaurant. And uh, let me show you the restaurant here. So that's a restaurant right there. It is locally owned, it's family owned. You're not gonna find a lot of uh, commercial stuff out here until you get to the outskirts of the community, which is New Braunfels, is which we're kind of headed towards right now. Now, when you go towards New Braunfels, you have gotta be a little careful because it is a little bit rougher. Uh, we're going from the, the part that's being uh, revitalized into an older part of the east side of San Antonio and uh, it can be rough. My wife works at the college right across uh, New Braunfels which is St. Philip's Community College. 
she's an academic advisor so she sees all the crime that happens she sees you know the things that you know people walking around and that's one of the things that i don't like about dignity is that it's nice uh, as far as the homes and you know they're revitalizing it and doing all this good stuff let me get around this trash person but there is still a lot of crime left so you'll see people that are you know strung out on drugs you know they're and you can tell because they're just talking to themselves they're you know um just not not uh, your everyday you know type of thing that you see so these are the homes again that you'll see here uh, but let's go take a look at um uh, well, actually, you know what? I should have gone to New Braunfels Street so I could show you what I'm talking about. So we're going to go to the outskirt of this neighborhood, which is New Braunfels. That is on the east side of the community. And uh, you'll be able to see it's still early, so there might not be a lot of activity. But I'm pretty much, I, I would bet that there probably is. But again, look, some of these homes are really nice. They've been redone. Some of them are still falling apart. Like I mentioned earlier, there's a home on the market right now for $79,995. It's got to be a, a rehab, uh, you know, type of home because it's just, you're not going to find that kind of home uh, for that cheap here in, in uh, Dignity. So this is New Braunfels right here. This is the edge, the eastern edge of the community. I'll make a right so you can see some of the actually you know what I'm gonna make a left because I, I gotta tell you a story so you can look this up you can google it but this gas station was closed down it's not that gas station this gas station was closed down because people kept getting shot here and I mean when I say shot they were like it was a almost a daily occurrence that they were getting shot so they had to close it down and uh, actually it was right here. It, it's in this vacant lot right here. They closed it down and they demolished it. That's how bad it was. They just kept getting, uh, you know, people kept getting shot and it was not a good thing. So this is the, again, the furthest edge of Dignity. Um, as we go closer to town, you're gonna be able to see that, uh, you know, things are nicer. So let's go ahead and turn on this street right here. Now, when you're in Dignity and you want to go maybe out for a drink or you want to go out to, um, what do you call it, to to have a beer or, you know, to just, you know, hang out with your wife or your kids, staying closer to the downtown area is going to be better for you. You don't want to come out to this side because this is the side that's pretty rough. Um, but yet people still still live in this area. And honestly, like this side, you know, going east, it is pretty rough, but they're starting to, to build up the homes there. And eventually it's gonna push it back out to where, you know, it, the neighborhood gets better and better going that direction. But for right now, that's one of the reasons I would not live in this neighborhood is because there's still a lot of crime. There's a lot of drug usage and all that stuff. So. To give you a uh, perspective, the national average, um, you know, on a scale of one to 10, uh, 10 being the highest, the crime rate here in Dignity is six to seven. And it just depends on the crime, whether it's, you know, murder, rape, uh, burglary, or that kind of stuff. So let's, uh, as I talk, let's turn this camera back around so you can see these homes, because there's some nice ones right here. So look at this one right here in the corner. It's a really nice house. Um, the average home, the square footage here in Dignity is 1,300 square feet. And the average price is about 400,000. And it just, it depends on who you ask, because there's some sites out there that say it's a little bit less. But on the market today, the average price is $400,000. And, you know, for 1,300 bucks, or 1,300 square feet, uh, that's, that's pretty expensive, but so we're coming up to the Artemisia Bowden Academy. This is the elementary school that, well, actually it's elementary and secondary school. It's a pre-K through eighth grade. So if you live in this neighborhood, this is the, the school that your child will go to if they're in that age range. And the, 
the ratings that they get from niche.com and greaterschools.org is, uh, I think it's a C minus. Uh, so it's not that, you know, them get very great reviews. But remember I was talking about homes that look like containers or they look like boxes? Like, here's some right here. These aren't, these aren't boxes, but these are definitely small. So these homes are going for, you know, a good price. They're right next to each other. I mean, that's that's just what you get if you want to live in this neighborhood. I mean, you're going to get homes that are, like, right on top of each other. The newer ones, the older ones, you got more breathing room. You got more, you know, more yard and all that stuff. So that's just something to consider if you move out here. Now, the thing about Dignity also is that the makeup of residents here is um, it's 50-50. So you're going to have about 50% people that own homes and about 50% of the people that are renters. So if you want to rent a home, you absolutely can. And uh, the rental average here or the rental prices go anywhere from $1,200 for an 1,100 square foot home to five thousand dollars for an 1800 square foot home and i know that's a big big ask so the the most expensive home that is on the market right now is uh renting also they have it on the market to rent for five five thousand dollars a month and uh, i want to say that one was at seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars so what i'm going to do here in a minute i'm going to go ahead and let's go drive by it so and make a turn and then we'll go drive by this house because I want to see it. I mean, $5,000 for rent, that's crazy. And, uh, or $700,000, which again, I guarantee you it's a box. It's a home that looks like a box. And uh, I, there's no way, no way I would pay that much money for a box. So let's go look at it. I could be wrong. It could be a really nice colonial home or, you know, craftsman home something like really beautiful but i doubt it so we're driving here i'm gonna bring the camera over a little bit so this is kind of an industrial area the um fire department their headquarters is right here and no we passed it out it's behind us but uh, the fire department headquarters is here. Uh, police stations, you have a police station that is near the Pearl, which is right across the, the highway, uh, IH-37, which is right over this area over here. I can't see my finger. Um, but there's a Hay Street Bridge that we're going over right here. I'll turn the camera so you can see. So this is a Hay Street Bridge right there. And um, we're finding our way into the home that I'm wanting to show you. Oh, and then there's another another uh, police station that is downtown, which is also not, not too far from here. So we're in the 300 block of Lamar, and we need to make our way to the 700 block of Lamar. But take a look at these houses as we drive by here. So it's a really big hodgepodge of styles of home. You know, like I said, I mentioned there's some craftsman homes and honestly driving around, I haven't seen very many craftsman homes, but uh, you know, the, the rest are colonial or, you know, these box homes that they're putting up, which I'm not a big fan of. I almost bought a house a couple of months ago and that was one of the reasons we didn't buy it. It was a $600,000 house. And my wife and I were talking about it. And we're like, you know, this looks like a box. Like, it's just no character. So uh, we canceled our contract because we didn't want to buy a box. When we get to this house, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get down so I can look. Because I'm really curious. There's a community center that we just passed by. It's called the Ella Community Center. But there's another community center, which I'll take you by here in a minute. It's called the uh, Carver Cultural Arts Center. Let me show you these homes right here. 
the Carver Cultural Arts Art Center. Uh, it's a really nice. Oh, this is a 700 block. Okay, they have got to be kidding me. This is the home. All right, now you get to see me. So let's get off of here. Let me take my microphone because I took it off. But they want $5,000 for this home to rent it. Sorry, I didn't, I don't mean to be right up in your face, but they want 500,000 or excuse me, $5,000 a month to rent this house and i mean there's nothing that tells me this is a five thousand dollar a month house so here's a, the thing about this neighborhood because it is getting rebuilt and it's getting you know uh basically they're flipping the whole neighborhood uh people think that they can get oh yeah no this is a duplex this is not the one I was thinking about. Let me go back and look at my notes. This is a duplex that's for rent. This is the one that's 1100 Okay, so, okay, my bad. <laughs> this is the $1,100 a month. It's a duplex. It's um, actually $1,200 a month, 1100 square foot. But that's the house right there behind me. This is, uh, I think, this thing's locked in my face. But this is a duplex right here. And they want $1,200 a month. For an 1100 square foot apartment basically i have a handy dandy little little setup here but uh okay so that was um that was an, an apartment my bad i misspoke that is an apartment that's 1100 square feet and they uh they're renting it out for 1200 dollars a month the home that we want to go look at is not this one uh, i mean we do want to look at this one because i want to kind of give you a comparison but I guess for uh, for twelve hundred dollars, that's not not un unreasonable, right? If you want to live here. But uh, let's go look at the other one that that's a seven hundred thousand man. I was like, whoa, that is horrible! Like, no way. Okay, now we're gonna go to the next house. This is the one that is um, five thousand dollars a month for rent. So if you want to rent and you don't mind paying five thousand dollars a month. This is the house you're going to get. And uh, let me turn my camera around so we can look at these homes as we drive by. So this, this part of the neighborhood isn't too bad. I just see some homes up here that are that have been redone. So not too bad. There's still some homes that are, that are not that good. But uh, we're going to go check these out. But... This part of the neighborhood looks pretty decent. Uh, it looks like it's been, you know, done up. But we're going to go and look right across right across the street. Then you got this house right here. See, that's a Craftsman style home right there. That's that's nice. I like that. And I like that they did try to stay within the the, you know, architectural work. They when they rehab these now, one of one of the things about these homes, and in San Antonio, is that the soils here are very expensive. So, it's not uncommon to get uh, to have foundation issues. So, if you buy one of these old historic homes, and um, it has a pier and beam foundation, you're gonna have issues. I have a, a home; it's not historic, but it's in the Alamo Heights area, and that area of San Antonio is also known for having like really spongy soil so uh, we have foundation issues we're hoping that if we can help enough people buy homes we could actually build a new home and uh and put a slab a concrete slab foundation on it all right here we go we're now on north olive street and we're going to go by this one restaurant that my wife and I love to go to. It's called Con Huevos, which means with eggs. And uh, it's a really, really good breakfast spot. Uh, you make They make tacos and uh, they got all kinds of tacos that you can, you can buy there. It's actually right here. Let me show you. This is it right here, this blue building. 
So that blue building right there is called Conuevos. We'll drive by it here in a minute. But they make some awesome breakfast tacos. They also do uh, brunch and lunch. But you see how you have all these little mom and pop stores. That's a florist store right there. Um, all right, we're we're here. We're here. That home right there is for rent for five thousand dollars a month. Are you kidding me? That's got to be the wrong house. That's it. Nothing special about that home. I, I'm flabbergasted. Like that, I would not pay five thousand dollars a month to live in that house. It's got to be wrong. Okay, so remember I told you about the uh, the Carver Cultural Center? So this is it right in front of us. This is the art center. And they have, um, they have a school that's attached to it. It's called the Carver Idea School. So it's one of the private schools that you can put your children in right there. But uh, oh, I don't want to show you my, my car. Let's drive here. But this is the Carver Cultural Art Center. The so what they do, their mission is to really, you know, celebrate diversity and with the main focus on the African American community because this is what this community was, predominantly African American, uh, for, for many, many years. But um since the investors started coming in here and started, you know, revamping and doing all this good stuff there there's been a mix of people that that move into this area so i'm gonna you can't see it there but here's the idea school we'll pull into the idea school and uh then we'll circle back and look at the carver cultural art center so the idea school is right here there's one of the private schools you can bring your your child to As you can tell, there's still a lot of development going on here, and uh, they have big plans for all this here. Um, I can't wait to see what they, they come up with, but here we're going to drive in front of the school like we're dropping off a child or something. So there you go, that's the... Uh, Carver Idea Academy or Idea Carver Academy. So we're going to go by now the Cultural Arts Center. This Cultural Arts Center has been here for, I think, 75 years, 77 years, something like that. Uh, so they've been, you know, it's kind of been the, the anchor for the community to, uh, again, celebrate diversity and to uh, celebrate the African-American culture. They've had a lot of um, famous African-American artists play here. And I've gone to it for a couple of art shows. I've gone to it for, you know, other events. And it's it's really, they do a real good job. This is another main street right here that we're on. This is uh, North Hackberry. So Hackberry Street, you're going to have a lot of traffic here. So like I was telling you earlier, if you're going to go and you're going to eat, you want to eat somewhere on the west side of the neighborhood. And there's a lot of good choices to uh, to eat at. Um, there's uh, there's just a whole bunch of them. I told you about, oh, let's go this way, about Con Huevos. And there's a Dignity Meats also as a place that you can go eat. They have some really good brisket and Okay, so here's, that is uh, Con Huevos right there, the blue one. And then uh, Dignity Meats, they they make a really good brisket sandwich. So if you want to go eat there, 
those are two good places to go eat. And another thing that they have here is um, they have these breweries. And one of my favorite breweries is we kind of just passed it. So we'll circle back right here in a minute. But it's called Black Lab Breweries. And uh, it's it's a nice little shopping center. I'm going to turn around here and we'll go to it. Actually, let's go through, through this. I think there's an alleyway. <laughs> so uh, we'll, uh, we'll go back to Black Lab uh, Breweries. It's a nice place. The restaurant next door to it serves pizza. So you can have a pizza. You can have a couple of beers on the outdoors. And like I, I mentioned earlier, that, you know, it's very pet friendly. So if you want to, if you want to have, you know, dinner or a beer and you want to bring your pets along with you, uh, you can surely do that. So let's turn the camera around so I can show you again. They're not open right now, but you're going to get to see the actual outdoor space. There's also a, uh, there's a, a cake a bakery. So in this little complex here and then this other restaurant called magpie so here it is right here so you can come out here sit in these benches you know have a beer there's black lab uh you can have a beer have a pizza you know and just hang out and that's kind of the vibe of this community is that there's a lot of you know people that get together they you know they they hang out outside and uh, just enjoy each other's company. All right, so let's go ahead now. Uh, we're gonna head on over to the home that I told you we're gonna look at, because um, I wanna show you an actual house that is on the market right now, so you can see what, you know, the work that's being done to these homes, because on the outside, some of them may not look like much, but on the inside, they do look a lot nicer. So we're gonna head on over to that now. As we drive there, some things that you want to also consider moving here, or some things that are you know important to me whenever I was moving uh, from place to place as I was serving in the military, uh, is the schools. So you have uh, the Artemisia Bowden School, that's the primary for pre-K to, to sixth grade. And then uh, Brackenridge High School is the high school that services this community. So I've talked about that one in other videos that I've done, uh, that I did on uh, Southtown and the King Williams District. Uh, so if you wanna see that, Brackenridge is there. Again, it's not the highest rated high school in San Antonio. Uh, it gets a job done. They do have a media program. So if your child is into the media arts, then that would be a good selection for them. But there's a lot of other options that you could do as far as private schools. So you have Central Catholic, which is a Catholic school, but it's rated A. And um, the average tuition in that school is, I think, $1,200 a month or $1,100. I think it's $1,200 a month. And then um, you also have Providence High School, which is another Catholic school and that one is about the same $1,400 a month for tuition but those are two that one is rated B plus so those are two um, two different homes or excuse me two different um, what do you call it schools that you can send your child to so we're here at uh, at the home that we're gonna do a video or that I'm gonna show you uh, uh, it's been on the market for a little while I think the price for this one is like $450,000, $460,000. So let me undo everything that I got going on here and then I'll meet you inside. Well, I'll meet you in the front of the house. All right, so here we are in front of the house. Uh, you can see the street there, showed you kind of the neighborhood, but I'm gonna turn the camera around so you could see the, as we go in. So there's a front door. It's got a really nice blue door with some frosted glass for privacy. And as soon as you walk in, you're going to walk in. It opens up from the living area all the way to the kitchen right there. And it goes all the way to the backyard, which is right there. But uh, this is a nice feature to have because when you're in the living room, if your spouse or somebody else is in the kitchen, maybe doing something, uh, you can still communicate with them. You have line of sight. Uh, and then there's a real nice uh, feature there. 
where you can put your TV. Dining area right here. I love the lights. And then you have this waterfall island. Uh, dishwasher goes right there. And if you like cooking on gas, you're in luck because this one has a gas stove. I don't cook on anything other than gas because it's just uh, easier to manage. All right, so that's the kitchen. Nice little accent piece right there. And then this is where your refrigerator would go. All right, right next to it, you have this walk-in pantry. I love the, the, uh, the cabinets for space, nice countertop, really nice tile work, plenty of drawer space. So if you need to store stuff, you got lower cabinets and then you have these open cabinets up here. And then the last part of this section of the home is your washer and dryer, your washroom. So you have your washer and dryer right there. Love the tile work. And then you have a closet, you know, for cleaning supplies and such. So closet right here. Now let's go to the other section of the home where all the bedrooms are at. When you walk, you have this nice hallway that goes right down to the primary bedroom over there. But we'll start right here in the first bedroom. This first bedroom is in the front of the house, so you can see out of the front of the house. These are very good sized rooms. Uh, you can fit a king size bed in here and still have room to do gymnastics if you want. And this looks at the front porch. So the next room is the, the bathroom that is shared by bedroom one, two, and your guests. So you have a shower tub combo. Look at that tile where it goes all the way up to the ceiling. Then you have a one vanity, one sink vanity right here. And I like those lights that are down there because you can, at nighttime, leave the lights off and then it'll illuminate the bathroom enough for you to get around in it. Making our way to bedroom number two. Again, decent sized room. You can definitely fit a king size bed in here. Then your closets have built-ins. I like this feature right here, watch. Ooh, you could put a bunch of shoes right there. Shoes and purses, my wife would go crazy for this. Continuing on to the primary bedroom. So this long, nice hallway gives you privacy. And if you're in your primary bedroom, you can literally walk out to the back patio via these French doors right here. But for those days that you're filthy and you want to take a shower, or excuse me, a, uh, a bath, here's the nice bathtub. Freestanding bathtub, again, tile work all the way to the ceiling. But if baths aren't your thing, you have your shower right there. You have a dual sink vanity, the same under lighting feature. And actually look, oh, look at that mirror. Wow, I like it. And then you have your walk-in closet. Little cubbies for shoes right here. Enough space to hang all your clothing, dresses, shirts, suits, and some more cubbies. So this is what the kind of quality that you would find from somebody that does flip a home here in Dignity. Um, so if that's something that you're looking for, that's awesome. If you would like help finding a place, if if this neighborhood speaks to you, I'd love to do some showings for you. That's what I'm here for. But if this is not your neighborhood, don't worry, because there's more videos in my channel that you could tune into and watch. And uh, I'm, I do these very, very often. So I'm going to show you different parts of San Antonio. So don't forget to subscribe, hit the like button, share this video with somebody that's moving to San Antonio or with your spouse or anybody else. So, all right, take a look at more videos and uh, we'll see you in the next one.